Okay, at this time we're going to go ahead and continue on. Uh, I'll turn it back over to uh, Mr. Ron Bradley, the city manager. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, presenting honor. I'm sorry. <laughs> Places, obviously. <laughs> well, now that I've got that out of my system, I would like to introduce uh, San Diego County Fire Chief John Hawkins. He is also a veteran of over 30 years in the fire service business. And with that, Chief Hawkins. Thank you very much. One little correction, actually, I'm entering my 50th year in the fire service. I started in 1964 at age 17. But thank you for that, yeah. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Youssef, City Council members. My name is John Hawkins, and I'm honored to be here tonight to present to you what we think is a reasonable program for fire protection and EMS services in the city of Hammond. I'm honored to serve as the Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Chief, and I've done so since August 1st, 2006. Our proposal tonight, I gotta get the microphone adjusted because I have a tendency to be a little loud anyway, so I need to get the distance adjusted. Our proposal tonight will include four components. This introduction by myself, second of all, will be a video, and I will key the AV people when we'd like the video to go. The third part will be a PowerPoint for, uh, uh, presentation by Division Chief David Fulcher. And the fourth part will be a very short closing by myself. Right now I'd like to introduce our four chief officers who we have here tonight in addition to myself, or three in addition to myself. The first would be Deputy Chief of Central Operations, Robert Michael. Deputy Chief of Administration, Glenn Patterson and Division Chief of the Batista Division, David Fulcher. All four of us are Valley residents and all appreciate the chance to be present with you tonight. In an introductory format, I would offer to you that we view our cooperating agencies as genuine partners and our agreements as cooperative fire protection agreements. To that end, we never state that we are contractors. Nothing could be farther from the truth. We will always provide cooperative fire protection services that fully integrate local partner agencies, ensure local control, and maintain close local interactive relationships. Any cooperative agreement would be between the city and the county of Riverside. All of our partner city agreements roll up into one master agreement between Riverside County and Cal Fire. Our fire department is best described as an integrated cooperative regional fire protection system. It is provided by Cal Fire, by Riverside County, 21 of the 28 cities in the county, and one community services district. The strength of our system is in the additive values provided by our cooperative partners. And I would ask to stress that point again. The strength of our system is in the additive values of our cooperative partners. Our system represents what is always recommended as a regional model by major emergency after action reports. We strongly believe in local control and always being responsive to our partner cities. The residents of any city or county, the city of Hemet, not only deserve but rightfully expect the highest degree of operational competence and customer service. We are extremely well supported by our elected and appointed officials who oversee and provide policy guidance to the fire department. We believe in building trust and respect with our local agencies. The Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department unit is, a, is spread out over 7,200 miles with 97 fire stations. We have depth of resources and the ability to respond to multiple simultaneous emergencies. 
Our operation spreads from 200 miles from Corona to the Colorado River. It includes, again, 97 fire stations, seven aerial ladder companies, three camps with 17 fire crews, the nearest of which is the Batista camp with six crews, two hazmat teams, three camps, I'm sorry, three camps, I skipped ahead, and the Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base, which is in the city of Hemet. We're very proud of that, that location and facility. Most every county or city responding apparatus has a dual purpose firefighter paramedic already on it. To meet the challenge of providing public safety, we employ about 1,150 responding personnel, 240 support personnel, and 280 reserve volunteer firefighters. Part of the Riverside County Fire Department is the Riverside County Office of Emergency Services for Disaster Management. This is a fine relationship and it works very well for the citizens. During a declared uh, county emergency, County OES facilitates all disaster management including emergency and catastrophic pre-incident prevention response, disaster recovery and impact mitigation. In concluding this brief introduction, we thank you very much for the chance to present our services to the city of Hemet. And we expect to deliver a commitment to the city that we honor your respect in us and allowing to pre 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 uh, present this proposal. We would be honored to serve the city of Hemet and meet your expectations. Our goal would be to provide you the highest possible, most competent service while always being nice to everyone. We also believe in community outreach and doing the things that the public expects and deserves. As such, we subscribe to five core values, and I'll go slowly as I recite these. The core values of the Riverside County Fire Department are leadership, competence, integrity, safety, and customer service. And again, customer service reduces to nothing more difficult than be nice. We realize the service challenge in Hemet is huge, but the opportunities that we'll present could allow us to best serve you. We always strive to make a difference. And in fact, our 2013 motto for the Riverside County Fire Department is we can make a difference. Budget difficulties or whatever set aside, we can and will make a difference. I'd like to say thank you, and I'd like to, at this point, key the video. This is a video of CAL FIRE and our local government operations that last 13 minutes. And after that, Division Chief David Falcher will give a presentation on behalf of the Riverside County Fire Department. Thank you again. <coughs> hard to plan for every what-if situation. But with CAL FIRE as your cooperative partner, you can be confident that you'll have the right resources to respond to any emergency. Is your government organization looking for a better, more economical way to provide emergency services? The ability to integrate all of the resources that a state agency can bring into a local area with the respect that they have for local people and our, our partnership just makes it the best deal that, that you can have for having good fire services and good budget decisions. Do you want to maintain local control and identity of these services? CAL FIRE gives us all of the services we need in fire and emergency services while still being our fire department. CAL FIRE can give your local agency the best of both worlds. Economy of scale and local control. A win-win for you and your organization. Cal Fire's been around a long time, since 1885, and our first local government cooperative agreements occurred in the 20s. Cal Fire protects 32 million acres statewide, but 
A part of that are 145 contracts or cooperative agreements with local government. CAL FIRE is more than just a wildland organization. We do everything. We go to structure fires, brush fires, technical rescue, medical emergencies, hazardous materials, discharges, and if the emergency occurs in your backyard, CAL FIRE will be there to help you. The CAL FIRE mission really provides for a mutually beneficial service to local government. And we really want to be there to serve what the, that county or city or district <laughs> wants. And to, to that end, we will design a fire protection system that the local government elected officials hopefully will approve and it will best serve the public. The core values of CAL FIRE's cooperative uh, program are simple and five. And they are leadership, competence, integrity, safety, and customer service. CAL FIRE, from a lot of cities' perspective, has always been the wildland fire department. And what we've found over the years here in Temecula is they've actually met a very high level of urban service for our community. The City of Oroville Fire Department has a Schedule A dispatch agreement with CAL FIRE that uh, allows for the seamless dispatch of resources uh, to emergencies in our community. That's a great benefit to us because uh, it allows us to fill large alarm responses quickly and easily uh, all through a centralized dispatch center. It's always comforting for me as a, as a public official uh, to know that we have the local forces necessary to take care of the expected fires that we see in our county. But once in a while, you have an unexpected fire, whether it's due to environmental conditions, whether it's due to Santa Ana winds. I'm comfortable knowing that I have the backing of the statewide resources of CAL FIRE to react and react fast. Uh, they are uh, always quick to respond and uh, very much appreciated in the community for safety and um, uh, response time is just absolutely marvelous and it's either just part of the community, it's like family. As a county supervisor, one of my highest priorities is effective, efficient, and the best possible emergency services for my constituents. So that would be my number one goal. And it, I am so pleased that we have this partnership with CAL FIRE because it helps me to meet my goal for my constituents. CAL FIRE gave us that ability to expand FIRE to get that regional aspect. It's my opinion that FIRE should be regional throughout <laughs> the entire state. Uh, it doesn't make much sense. FIRE doesn't know city boundaries. A FIRE starts in one boundary, goes across. This gives us that consistency. Economies of scale is a simple concept. Big is good as long as it's effective and delivers well to the public. Because CAL FIRE is a statewide agency that can draw on resources from everywhere, we have seen the benefit both in service and cost savings to the county. The communities here, uh, they actually have a cost savings of uh, contracting with uh, Riverside County Fire and uh, CAL FIRE. And because of that, they, they can spend a little bit more, more money on having a, a ladder truck like the one you see behind me. And then also by being able to provide ambulances and other specialty uh, services that uh, other communities may not be able to afford. The main reason we contracted with CAL FIRE was because it made fiscal sense for our organization. That's also the reason why we continue the dispatch agreement, because it's still more cost effective than us starting our own dispatch center. The savings we save in public safety allows us to have concerts in the park. It allows us to have a community services department. In our CAL FIRE operational procedures, we have a manual and it actually has a matrix that uh, we, we fill the matrix out together when you ask me for a request for proposal uh, and find out if it's going to be a benefit to you and a benefit to us. It has to be mutually beneficial to both sides. When people uh, work in the city uh, or the county of Riverside, as a firefighter, as a contractee or a subcontractee of the state, they assume the identity of the municipality in which they're serving. The gentlemen and ladies that worked in the city of Temecula were known as Temecula firefighters. The ones that work in Riverside County are looked upon as Riverside County firefighters. And they are interested in the well-being of the community. Many get involved in charitable organizations within the community and make themselves a part of the community. And we have a lot of input at the governmental level in deciding what levels of service we want. CAL FIRE for the City of Beaumont is our fire department. We treat them as our employees. 
they act like our employees, and we just have the ability to draw from a lot greater pool of good employees. That's one of the things that, that I find unique about our relationship. We've been able to take three agencies, Cal Fire, Riverside County, and the city, and deliver a service that is truly local in how it feels to the residents. They're, they're touched by local government. They know where City Hall is. They can come in and see us face to face. And we've been able to mesh that between these three agencies and deliver something that our residents are, are proud of, that, um, that meets their needs. In contracting with CAL FIRE, there are three simple steps. Step one, contact the unit chief. Step two, provide the unit chief a request for proposal for fire protection. Step three, is the local government pass a resolution uh, ordaining that request for service. When you start talking dollars and cents, it's a great deal to contract. The agency does not have to do labor negotiations. They do not have to hire people. They do not have to pay for the training. All that's done as part of the rate that you pay for, um, for services. And so all you're doing every year is picking from a menu what level of service you want, and then you pay the check-in and they provide the service. And they're very responsive too to the local community's issues from what we found here in Temecula. Whether it be a paramedics, whether it be truck companies, whether it be hazmat teams, technical rescue teams, um, the level of training and also the level of staffing on the fire engine that they uh, would like to have. And then we go from there as far as putting together a contract to see if their needs are met as well as the department's needs are met and the employees. We like the fact that we are not caught up in having to negotiate with unions. That can be an exceptionally time consuming and stressful process. Cal Fire does that for us so we don't have to uh, use up our valuable resources since we're a small city. The process of developing a cooperative agreement can run from five to eight months depending on the complexity of what the local government is requesting. I recently was just involved in renewing our dispatch contract and uh, Cal Fire is wonderful to work with. Any concerns or challenges that we see they're very quick to address and help us find solutions to. And uh, that's very pleasing to both me as a fire chief and also uh, to our city council, knowing that the, the group that we contract with is responsive to our needs. Under the Public Resources Code, CAL FIRE is authorized to enter into cooperative fire protection agreements with local government. And that doesn't mean that we terminate your firefighters, we absorb them into our state system. And they can either go on a statewide basis and promote and, and transfer statewide or stay here locally. When they transition to CAL FIRE, your employees retain seniority and certain accrued benefits. And they'll receive a competitive salary and benefit package with enhanced career opportunities. As we transitioned over to CAL FIRE, I was given options. Um, we we're given the opportunity to write down what we'd like to do and where we would like to go. It's just not one day you were wearing a uniform and here put these on, we pluck you up out of your station and put you in Fish by Falls. No, please, it's not, it's not done that way, it isn't. You have a lot of say. And with our contract, the way ours was written was we did not have to leave until we said we want to go out and work in the unit. For the employees that came across, including myself, I have not heard a single complaint. I think everybody has been challenged. Everybody enjoys what they're doing. Great organization to work for, great support, uh, and it is incredible. Prior to our transition, we, we as, a, as a group, as a fire department, met with the state. Um, they took us throughout the unit. They showed us every aspect of, of Cal Fire Riverside, um, all the different jobs that we we're going to have or may have in the future. Uh, we met with personnel, we met with chief officers, uh, we met with personnel on the floor. Cal Fire provides enhanced training to improve safety for firefighters and the general public. The department is active in regional occupation programs, community colleges, state fire marshal, and other certified training courses. Labor relations, negotiations, and other personnel actions are the responsibility of Cal Fire now that they are state employees and no longer the responsibility of local government. As more people move to California and our communities grow, 
Demand for fire and other emergency services will only increase. Are you prepared to meet the challenge? Cal Fire will make sure you're ready. From on-the-ground fire protection and hazard reduction to disaster planning, Cal Fire will be there for you. When you sign a cooperative agreement with Cal Fire, you'll be taking a positive step to provide efficient and effective emergency services for your community. It's a great way to, to bring in resources from across the state, pay for something that meets your own um, revenue targets, but you just can provide a better service. Right? I don't know why we would ever even question it, and we don't, so I'm happy that we do it. And any other agency that's thinking about how can you do something better, this is actually something you should look at. I have to applaud the uh, CAL FIRE organization when we had the Esperanza fire, in which we lost five U.S. firefighters, if you'll remember. Uh, we set up a command post uh, in Beaumont, and within 24 hours, we had units coming in from all over northern and central California uh, ready to, to get in there, risk their lives in the protection of lives and public property. Uh, it was a tremendous display of courage, unity, and, uh, and cooperation that I've never witnessed in my, my career as a public official. Uh, if you're considering, if you're a new city and you're considering contracting uh, with CAL FIRE, uh, again, you're not only going to have your local fire department, but you're going to have a statewide fire department that's going to be there when you need them the most uh, during a very serious fire that threatens um, structures and more importantly, that threatens lives. Put the CAL FIRE team to work for you. For more information on how CAL FIRE can design a cost-effective emergency service package to meet your local needs, contact your local CAL FIRE unit chief or visit our website at www.fire.ca.gov. CAL FIRE, dedicated to cooperative emergency services. Talker, so I guess I not like Chief uh, Hawkins here. I don't speak very loud, so I have to make sure I'm, I'm in this process here. Uh, Mayor Yusuf, City Council members, staff, uh, citizens of Hemet, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I want to first say congratulations and thank you, by the way, uh, Chief Morris, excellent presentation. You represent the city well, you have a great fire department, and you're leading them. And it's, it's my pleasure to follow both uh, Chief Morris and Chief Hawkins. They're both great leaders. Um, they really care about the citizens of the, the county and the city, and uh, they care about their people. So both will fight diligently to make sure that their people are taken care of. It. And you got to follow a leader like that. And I hope that the city of Hemet firefighters are definitely behind uh, um, Chief Morris because we're definitely behind our chief. We'll follow him anyway. So I like to first start. And, Make sure I know what I'm doing with these buttons here. Hopefully I've got it right. Obviously, this is uh, for Cal Fire. I actually, I'm, I'm David Fulcher. Uh, I'm a division chief with the Riverside County Fire Department, Cal Fire. I work in this division. It's what we call the Batista Division. Uh, the, the personnel in this uh, the division of surrounding the city of Hemet, as well as the personnel at the Hemet Ryan Air Base, Batista Camp, and the Mountain Battalion are my responsibility. And one of the contracts that uh, I help oversee with one of my battalion chiefs is actually the city of San Jacinto. And another assignment I have is actually the, I'm responsible for the Riverside County Fire Hazards Materials Team. So, um, our presentation tonight will be basically uh, tell you who, you are, who, who we are and uh, what we do. Um, first thing I want to start off with is that we are Cal Fire, but we're also Riverside County Fire Department. And CAL FIRE gives us the ability to go into these cooperative agreements. What we look at is that we've been doing this, obviously, since 1940, on the cooperative agreements. We have 145 agreements right now. Um, out of 33 counties in the state, or actually we have 58 counties in the state, 33 of those we have actual agreements with. 31 cities, 33 fire districts, 25 special districts. 
And what we do is we gather this ability for our diversity, our experience. A lot of folks have the ability to work in Northern California, Southern California, small cities, large cities, and they bring those experiences back to the local government. Um, so they're, they're very versed in multiple tasks. Benefits, Chief Hawkins touched on this. We are an integrated regional fire protection system. We have one command and control system. We don't uh, have many chiefs, we just have one. Chief Hawkins is our chief. All of our cooperative partners, uh, what we do, we fall under Chief Hawkins. Um, again, a benefit, uh, labor relations. I don't want to labor on that one. But uh, there are no negotiations with uh, locals. Uh, we handle that through the state level. We handle HR discipline issues. We handle recruitment, we handle retention, we handle dismissal. Those can be very time consuming. If you've done a hiring process, if you've had to go through some long drawn out process, those take up personal, personal hours. We handle that. Economy of scale. We have pooled administrative costs. Uh, we have that great depth of resource, and we'll talk about that when I get through this. We have resources to bring in. We have resources for assistance. We also have what we call as access to our local partners. It was touched upon. We don't have four fire stations. We don't have 20 fire stations. We have, in Riverside County, 97 fire stations. We have 103 apparatus front line for fire engines and squads. We have truck companies. Those are all at your disposal. Um, simple as that. They're all at your disposal. We have a multiple greater alarm incident. We don't have to wait. We don't have to call another fire department and ask for resources to help us. Because under the master mutual aid system, they don't have to come. Even under the mutual aid system in Riverside County right now, if they're busy, if another fire department is taking calls in their own city, they're not, they don't have to come. They'll try. And I don't know of any fire chief who won't try to send you resources. Not even Chief, chief Morris. That's not what we do. The problem is, is they're busy taking care of their, own, their citizens as well. well that's where we have this great depth of resources. We have all those resources at our disposal right now. <clears throat> Chief Hawkins has given direction. We don't play politics with citizens. We provide the closest resource, and if that means we have to take 20 fire engines, we don't have to call another fire department. We send them right then and there from our command and control center. Values. Again, we're close to the customer and local government. You will retain if you elect to move forward, you will retain your local control. We report to you. We speak to your city manager. We get the direction from the city manager via you. Simple as that. You decide what level of service we're providing. We give you options. You tell us what you need. You are elected officials. You make policy decisions, not us. Economy of scale, we can touch on that over and over again. But if you can be big, but if you're not providing an efficient, effective service, it doesn't work for you. We try to be efficient and effective. We have what's called a city's partners group, which is all the partners for Riverside County Fire Department, the with Riverside County Fire Department. They sit on a regular basis and they help consult. We sit there together and they remind us what it is that we need to do be, to be efficient. We don't do this in a vacuum. We seek your leaders. We seek your city officials throughout the county to help us out. We have a regional model. That's what we build it on. We believe regional model is the way to go. As uh, one of the speakers said, fires don't cross boundaries, or fires cross boundaries. They don't, they don't know where we're at. They don't care. Traffic accidents, emergencies. You have people who don't live in the city that drive through it. We have people who don't live in the county that pass through it. We have a very busy, very busy county. So we look to provide that service to all of them not just one, not just five, not just 80,000. Every citizen of Riverside County is our citizen, and then we look to provide that service. We have a strong life safety and fire protection program. We have a bureau, which is strictly dedicated to that. That's doing plan checks, that's doing inspections, that's doing code enforcement. Those ladies and gentlemen are out there following the uniform fire code, building codes, and they, they provide us with information that we can provide back to you. We work with your building department, your planning department, to make sure that we have the right ordinances and the right codes to provide safety to you. Our Office of Emergency Services. Um, we have a great staff. 
their responsibility is to mitigate, prevent, teach, and educate, and follow up with cost recovery. We work hand in hand right now with the city of Riverside. One of our, our emergency services workers is Gina McGough. She comes at a regular basis and speaks with the city. We provide training in the city, not just because it's that, it's because it's for the whole entire valley. Um, that's one of the people that here. Those people wouldn't go away, they would just help benefit and provide more assistance. They also help us get grants. The same grants that you have today, they're the actually most of those are the keepers of them. They're the ones who pass the information down. We have them there, they're knowledgeable, they can continue to help us process these grants. Automatic aid and mutual aid. It's seamless under us because we have one command and control system. Again, we're not waiting, we're not calling another, another agency waiting for a duty chief to answer the phone and tell us that we can have a resource to send to another city or your city because that's what would happen. Right now, if there's a major greater alarm, a phone call has to be made to our dispatch center. We will call the other agencies, ask them for assistance and send them over here. We're part of what's the Office of Emergency Services Regional Dispatch Center, and that's what we do as our chiefs. They're, they're all aware of that. When it comes to CAL FIRE, there's basically two, uh, two bosses for Chief Hawkins. One is our region chief, Dale Hutchinson. He's basically responsible for all of Southern and Central California, as well as JOR, who is the executive officer for the County of Riverside. Chief Hawkins reports to both of those. If we are your, your partner via Chief Hawkins, we would report to you. You have your say. Everybody has their say. You will, you will dictate what's going to happen. As Chief Hawkins said, we are an integrated, cooperative, regionalized fire protection system. And here's the system. Um, the great thing about it is that it's the sum of its whole. All the parts together make this work. They make the current Riverside County Fire Department work. Without it, um, without our regional basis, without the cooperation of our partners, without the public-private partnership, without working with our, our local cities, our local districts, we wouldn't work. Our number one goal is to cooperate and make sure that we're providing the best fire protection system possible. And Chief Hawkins is, is leading that. Uh, when he says be nice, it's actually what he means is be nice. It's customer service. If you take care of everybody, nobody, nobody leaves the table without a say. Riverside County Fire Department's mission. It's simple. Riverside County Fire Department is a public safety agency dedicated to protecting life, property, and environment through professional integrity, or professionalism, integrity, and efficiency. That's to everybody. Not one, but to all. Our values, leadership, competency, integrity, safety, and customer service. We can't function without every single one of those. There are five, they're all equal. Take away one, we don't provide a service that's quality to you and your citizens. We do have 21 partner cities right now in one community service district. We look at the county of Riverside, all this unincorporated area. We're talking Ramona Bowl. We're talking Simpson Park. Those are all covered by Riverside County Fire Department by this valley. The state responsibility areas that, that adjacent the city, those are our responsibilities. We go into partnerships when we have fires in those general areas because that's what we do. Our Office of Emergency Services, we can't do it without them, and everybody needs assistance from our experts. And then again, Chief Hawkins mentioned that we do cover 7,200 square miles. Some of that's metropolitan. A lot of it's rural. We have the desert. So there's a lot of open space out there, but it's still, we're still there to protect it. And any citizen that's out there, we will protect it, as well as the environment. Personnel at our disposal right here, right now, Riverside County, is that we have 1,500 career staff folks. If we have greater alarms, we can call back folks and staff our fire engines to provide more fire engine coverage. We have 240 county or city support staff. Those are the folks that don't wear CAL FIRE patches. They wear a city patch or they wear a county patch or a district patch, but they support us and we support them. 
and we have currently 280 volunteer reserve firefighters countywide. Those are the same folks who bring out our, our trailers when we're actually out going already with our communication centers. They're the ones who drive our water tenders if we don't have them staff, our breathing supports. There are chaplains. There are, there are folks that work with our RACES program. They're the ones who will staff and help us staff our emergency command centers while we're opening up and make greater emergencies. Those folks are dedicated. You would have that service. 97 fire stations, 103 staff fire engines, seven staff aerial apparatus, just like that beautiful truck that you have in the city. We have seven of those. One breathing support that's staffed full time. Two hazardous materials teams in the county. And we're currently going through our staffing process or our typing process with OES to make sure that our hazmat teams are classified as type two teams. This is two teams staffed with five people each on both sides of the county. That's 10 hazardous materials team members ready to go, suit up, not riding on another fire engine, not riding on another truck, but sitting at those fire stations on their hazmat rigs, ready to go and support anybody in the county. We work hand in hand with the Office of Environmental Services as well. 17 hand crews. We have the great benefit of having those 17 hand crews. Here, most of them close by. We have seven up at Oak Glen. It's not that far away. And we have six crews stationed right out here in Batista Canyon. We have a wildland fire inside the city right now. You definitely have Chief Morris asked for those resources. We would give them to him. But I want to make sure you understand that Seven Points of Light, which is now called Cal Fire Master, right? Master Mutual Aid, we will give you any resources you need as long as you have an emergency that's going. But there's a little misnomer. Not everything is for free. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you're not a partner city, crews are not for free. Aircraft that comes from another agency, which would be the Forest Service, is not for free. Dozers are not for free. It's fire engines. Every fire engine we send you is for free until you contain that incident. I want to make sure you're fully aware of that. So, but we do have bulldozers. But, but by the way, if you're partners with us, we will make sure that that's taken care of and we will minimize any cost or impact to you whatsoever. We have three bulldozers in the county. We have one firefighting helicopter, which is also our, our heavy rescue helicopter. We do short hauls. We're performing rescues once a week for sure. Our crews are, are, are trained to go out and rescue people out in the middle of nowhere, which you can't drive into. They will drop their firefighters in. They will package the patient, fly them back out to the nearest landing zone, whether they're going to go by ground or whether they're going to go by Mercy Air, just like everybody else does. But we have them at our disposal. Of course, with good weather, um, we won't endanger their, their lives. We have two air tankers right here at Hammer Ryan Air Base and one air attack. That air attack plane is, is basically in the air to make sure that all the aircraft do not crash into each other, that they provide a great service, that they can, they can meet the needs of the IC on the ground, and they give them a better eyes. Basically, he's the, he's the bird in the sky. Tells, them or tells the incident commander what's going on. And then we have what we really love is our three mobile command units. When we're running a greater alarm, we can bring those out to the incident. We can run everything from that incident right there without hampering our dispatch services back in Paris. So that means we basically condensed it down so that they don't have to worry as much about what's going on, on the radio. We have our control system right then and there at our incident. What I have here is this one's a map. It's about our partners on the western side of Riverside County. When I said we have 21, on the western side of Riverside County, we have Eastville, Harupa Valley, Norco, Moreno Valley, Paris, Menifee, Lake Hillsmore, Wildemar, Temecula, Cala Mesa, Beaumont, Banning, City of San Jacinto, and the Rubido Community Service District. Some of these contracts have been going on since the 40s. We have one that we just picked up here just this last year. And I'd like to think that uh, they're just as happy as, the, as our oldest contract. And by the way, partnership, cooperative agreement. A little map of the highlighted areas, and that's where they're at. On the eastern side of Riverside County, we have Desert Hot Springs, Rancho Mirage, Indian Wells, Palm Desert, La Quinta, Indio, and Coachella. Some of these areas are rural. Some of these areas are heavily urban. 
we provide the level of service requested by our city leaders to meet the needs of those cities. In the desert, eastern side of the county, we actually have ambulances as well as ALS fire engines. They wished they had the rights. We transport the patients or citizens to the hospital based on their needs. What do we provide? What do we have? Fire, med fire medical services, we, we definitely provide fire protection. That's the same thing as all our fire departments out there, our brothers and sisters, they provide the same thing. We require that uh, county policy for us is that we will be paramedic assessment engines. If our trucks, we try to make sure they're all paramedic assessments, because we don't know who's backed up, who's, who's on the other call, they'll respond. If they're paramedic assessments, they can do the exact same thing as our engines. That's why they're dual purpose. Our squads, if we have squads, they are, and they're run by our career staff, they are ALS, which is paramedic service as well. We have emergency medical dispatching in place right now. It's new to our system. We implemented it last, last year. We were directed to do so. It was one of those things that we said that uh, through one of our evaluations that was the best for us to do that. We're doing that. And we're actually, we're new into it. We're, we're, we're honing it. We're getting better. And we're looking at different ways and possibilities to reduce the call volume, the call load that's currently on our engines out there right now. We have the same issues, multiple fire stations with 4,000 calls a year. We have multiple fire engines in there. Can we, are all those emergency incidents? Our emergency medical dispatching, its purpose is to define what's what's critical, what's not. We're not, we're not, let me rephrase this, we still send resources. We believe that every citizen deserves, when they call 911, they deserve fire department personnel showing up at their home. They didn't say, put me on hold. They didn't say, don't respond out to my house. They said we needed help. Whether we're going code two, which is license, or excuse me, without license arms, or code three, that's where it's helping us right there. It's telling us whether or not we should be endangering other people for something that's not immediately, immediately life-threatening. And that system is approved by a doctor. So we don't do that just willy-nilly. Doctors tell us, they do the evaluations, they tell us what we can and can't do. Our hazardous materials response team, just so you know, the closest one, it's sitting right in Winchester. That's where they're based out of, that's one of our teams. Actually, they respond to traffic accidents on the S-curve because half the road on Highway 74 is county and half the road on Highway 74 is city. They're right there. When we talk about coming around through four seasons, they respond to those traffic accidents along with Station 78 along with the city of Hemet. Technical rescue. We have USAR teams. When I said we have seven trucks, what we also have is seven seven USAR teams right then and there. We're also partners with FEMA, just like the city of Hemet. I've worked hand in hand with the gentlemen, the ladies and gentlemen on, on the Hemet Fire Department with that team. When they went to Katrina, we had folks at Katrina. When they went to Hurricane Rita, we had folks at Hurricane Rita. When they went to 9-11, Scott, he was there with our folks. Some of our folks have the same exact medical ailments. This team is in place for the entire county. We all participate. Volunteer fire reserve, excuse me, volunteer reserve firefighter program. We just revamped ours. Two years ago, we went through a process that said, we need more control. We need to make sure that our volunteers are better trained. They have one command and control system. And through a board ordinance, Chief Hawkins is now responsible for all the county volunteers. Fire Explorer programs. We have that as well. Our, our local Valley residents were in your parade this year, my fire explorers. They're in there every year along with our fire engines. We're proud of our, our young men and women in this valley, just like you are. We're trying to make sure that when our young men and women finish their explorer program, it's almost seamless, it's a tiered step. When they finish that program, they actually can be, when they're old enough, be volunteers. And our goal is to make sure that those volunteers, if they wish, become firefighters, career firefighters in their, in their lives. Not everybody wants to do it, but they're there. And our youth is important. Our Office of the Emergency Services, I said this before, their job, their primary purpose is disaster mitigation, prevention, response, coordination, recovery, and grant acquisition. 
Your SERP programs, we provide assistance. The grants that come through, they're there. Your sister city next door to you, we have a SERP program that was helped develop by them. We run it regularly. Well, we don't have the staff to, to do one a month, nor the amount of citizens you have, but we will process in two to three SERP training a year. They also help us with our with the first responder. What we do is medically first aid for local citizens, our, our, our actually city workers, and CPR. Those grants that you acquired, they help us acquire the same grants. The CBOG, the HAZMAT grant, pretty much comes from there. The gaming grants, all those grants we have the same access to, and we're actually competing on occasion for that same money. Under our cooperative agreement, there's no more competing. Some of it you will get no matter what, so we'll just use the, the gaming grant. That's because it's the city. The Seahawk, we come together, we, we pool our funds, we get a bigger grant, we provide you with the same services. They're all there. That office helps us prepare those. As I said earlier, our standard for Riverside County Fire Department is paramedic assessment needs. Why? Because we believe our citizens in Riverside County should have the best emergency medical care possible. We're not waiting for a private partner to show up and provide ALS service. We're there, right then and there, providing that service immediately. When we talk about minutes, while we develop your Measure C requirements, while we try to follow our NFPA standards, it's because minutes count, whether it's a fire, whether it's a medical emergency. And the sooner we can provide advanced care, better we are. So Chief Hawkins, with the help of Riverside County Board of Supervisors, that is, we made this our standard. We are, and we have, a full service dispatch center. It is EMB. It's located out of Paris. It provides 24 hour day fire and emergency dispatching. We have two backup systems. I was asked this question the other day, what happens when that system goes down? Well, we actually have two backup systems, one in Riverside and one in Indio, that we have folks trained in those areas that can go operate those systems right away. It's also designated as our, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna pull Rubio really quick. <laughs> don't worry, I don't have any political aspirations. <coughs> our Paris ECC, which is Emergency Command Center, is designated as the state's for Riverside County Office of of Operational Dispatch Center. There are six regions in the state of California. Our dispatch center operates out of one of those. There's a local fire chief, as a fire chief's association, usually typically one of those out of the years. One of the fire chiefs could be Chief Morris next year if he elects. To help run that, help provide us, give us direction. Because we look at that as a partnership. We've had the city of Marietta the fire chief give us direction on our dispatch center and how we help dispatch resources out when it comes to those larger, greater alarm emergencies where the Office of Emergency Services asks for any of our assistance, not just Riverside County Fire Department, but any fire department in Riverside County. Again, we have five full-time, or excuse me, two five-person full-time hazardous materials team. So I said, the closest one is out of Winchester. If you just go down Highway 74 off of Haddock, it's right there behind Valley Line. The next one is out off of in Palm Desert, which is right off of uh, Interstate 10 in Washington. So, and when we're when we're busy, we definitely do ask for assistance and vice versa. We believe that uh, most of the departments around, we can't do hazardous materials alone. It is a cooperative agreement. We help each other. And like I said before, that we're going through the typing process. Um, we actually are just waiting for the OES to come down and actually inventory our equipment and give us the blessing for an OES type 2 hazardous materials team. And uh, we receive a lot of our funding, a lot of our equipment. We go through the Seahawk grant. As a matter of fact, we were a founding member along with a couple other cities. I believe him was a founding member as well. Uh, when we do our quarterly drills, one of us is heading it up. They're a great team. I'll, I'll tell you that you do have a great hazardous materials team. Your folks are good. Great workers. When we talk about our, our aerial apparatus, we don't cross-staff our aerial apparatus. When we have a fire engine, 
they go to the emergencies. Our truck companies are there, ready to go. We don't have to get off that truck to get on another piece of equipment. If they're out of quarters, they don't have to drive back to that fire station, pick up that resource, and get it to a location. That's where those seven come in. There are two USAR teams right now, which means they can provide advanced auto education. They do technical rescues, confined space rescues, trench rescues. They do emergency building stabilization. They do flood and river rescue, and they do high and low angles. Our teams, your teams are trained just at the same level. Ours are just staffed 24-7 with four persons per person. As I mentioned, our, valley, our, our volunteers, our volunteer reserve firefighters and our explorers, we revamped our system. We started the process in 2010. We actually received the approval in 2011. Now, all the volunteers under Riverside County Fire Department report directly to Chief Hawkins. When it comes to our fire explore, explorer posts, we have 11 of them. I'm gonna ream off these. You're gonna see that most of these are inside our cities right now. We have Cal Mesa. Anza is the only one that's up there that's not actually in the city. We have Beaumont, Menifee, Lake Elsmore, Temecula, Hemet, which is out of our Little Lake Station, which is out of Florida, and Acacia. Excuse me, Stanford and Acacia. We have uh, two teams in Reno Valley West and East, and we have one in Harupa Valley. Again, we want participation from our citizens. We want participation from our youth. We want them to know that we're here to help them. We're here to support them, and they know that their fire department, no matter where it is, is going to do everything they can to help them get through the system. Office of Emergency Services. Chief Hawkins actually has two branches that work for him. That is fire protection, and it is Office of Emergency Services. Uh, most of the time, that's actually under law enforcement agencies. But for Riverside County Fire Department, it's under the fire department. Their functions, again, Disaster mitigation, they perform the drills, they help coordinate them, they set them up. If you needed to actually have any of the NIMS required training, we provide that. We make sure that your cities are compliant with federal regulations when it comes to ICS training. We make sure that the exercises are done on a regular basis so we stay compliant. Disaster prevention, one of our programs, CERP. We encourage every city, every valley, every location to, to process and to work through the community emergency response training. We all know that we're a limited resource, but our citizens, they're the ones who are gonna help. They're the ones who are gonna make or break a major disaster when we are all standing alone. We coordinate responses. They're there, they help us coordinate. If there are multiple agencies, when we activate our EOC, those folks are in there. They're making sure that Public Works is talking to County Public Works, TLMA. They're making sure that law enforcement officers are talking back and forth. If there's anything that's needed, they help coordinate that. And that's under Riverside County Fire Department's preview. The emergency operating centers, you have one. We have them. We have them in Riverside, but that's part of the whole regional system. And so that your information can get relayed up they help us get you the resources necessary. It might not just be fire service resources. It might be contractors. It might be bulldozers that are privately listed. They're there to help us get those resources here. And again, and, and I think those are great items, but it's that grant acquisition and management. None of our fire departments can exist without the grants that we're receiving today. They're, they help us manage our fire departments and get as much as we can to support our citizens so that we don't have to bear the cost on our local government. When it gets to administrative support, we can, we can show you the fire engines out there. You can see them driving up and down the road. You hear them all day and all night in this valley. What we also provide is chief officer support. It's not just a simple battalion chief for operational training. It's me, the division chief for the valley. It's, it's my boss, the deputy chief who oversees that, the duty chief. There's not just one of us, there's multiple. There's four deputy chiefs. If one's on vacation, the other one picks it up. There's 11 division chiefs. If I'm not available, one of them is designated to answer a phone call if the city calls. Our battalion chiefs, we have over 34 on the floor. If one of ours is busy on an incident, 
and the other one will pick it up if one of ours is on vacation and the other one will come in and cover the area. We have that depth of resources. We have a fire prevention bureau, not somebody that we take from a fire engine. These are dedicated men and women. There are law enforcement officers. We do code enforcement if necessary. There are arson investigators, just like every other fire department. Our fire engine companies will do the basic preliminary fire investigation. If they find something out of the ordinary, if they have a multiple series of fires, our investigators will show up. They will investigate. They not only investigate that incident, but they follow it through, through prosecution, if they're able to find a suspect. They do everything for us. If there's an arrest warrant necessary, these are actually law enforcement officers with CAL FIRE, and they're there to help us do these things so that our fire engines can get back to service, run any incidents they have. Life Safety Fire Protection Plan, it's there for us. One of our, our options is actually that you actually have a fire safety specialist, somebody who can actually do it out of your office. Not out of Riverside, but would be sitting in your office. That would be at your counter, that would be doing the plan checks. That would be assisting with everything you do today. Telecommunications and information technology, what we like to call that is just simple as IT and comms. If your computers break, we have somebody who's able to help us. If our radios don't work, we have somebody who can actually go out there and fix our radios. Training and safety bureau. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull Rudy again. Training and safety bureau. We have dedicated men and women that their sole response is to make sure that our personnel are receiving the best training possible. And that whether they're in their fire station, driving their fire engine, or on their incidents, are performing to the highest level of safety, and they have the highest level safety equipment out there. And that's their sole function. Chief Hawkins, their division chief, is responsible for them. Chief Hawkins has given that delegation that their job is to make sure that we're trained confident and safe. Public Information Office, we have one of those. We have staff. We have somebody on duty every day of the week, not a fire personnel, but Riverside County Fire, their job is to make sure that information gets out to the public. If there's a greater alarm, they'll even come out to our incident and help provide information to the public so if we need to get out, make sure we do mass media, get a hold of the news, do callbacks, Emergency service notifications, they help us do those things. Fleet service, we have a full shop. Their job is to maintenance our equipment. If a piece of equipment goes down, they provide us with another piece of equipment. If we don't already have one, they get it back in service, they take it away, they service it, they take care of that. They also look at our replacement of equipment, they pay attention to that. How old our equipment is. How many miles they have on it? Are we spending an exorbitant amount of money on that piece of equipment to repair it? They're paying attention to that for us. Strategic planning, when we talk about putting another thousand homes out in the valley, out of Trace Cerritos, our strategic planning is planning for that. They tell us where the next fire station should be made, placed. Of course we use rooftops, we use responses, we use drive times, we use the amount of emergencies that are there. We, we talk about population density. They help us help you formulate your general plan and for your future. We also have our own personnel and finance department. When there are issues, personnel, we go to our headquarters. Finance, if there's issues, it comes from here. Tonight we have uh, the Deputy Chief of Administration here. This shop handles all that. If there are issues or concerns about the billing process or how it's done, he has personnel will answer every single question. If I couldn't answer it, or my, one of my battalion chiefs, we're very attentive and they'll be there to answer those questions. Fire prevention, we talked about that, but quickly, it does life and safety inspections. We do public education. We do hazard reduction programs. We adopt our uniform, we work and adopt on our, our uniform fire code fire planning, arson investigations. To the meat and the bones, there's, that's what we do. The bottom line is that we requested in October to provide you with a, or provide, potentially provide you with a proposal for fire service, fire protection emergency services. 
there are a few things that you said. You said that we had to either meet or enhance the service that you currently have. You said that we had to make sure that whatever we provided you would meet the minimum of Measure C, which is respond to all areas of the, of the city within, it, within five minutes, 80% of the time, in addition to each zone. Our proposal, we believe, met that or meets that. In addition, there were some proposal, design proposals. It says that you must have a local identity. You have to have local control of your services, budgets, funding, and fire protection. Basically, that's you tell us what you need. You tell us what you want, and we'll provide it for you. We had to match those services, and we had to provide that at the most cost-efficient delivery method. Our personnel had to be professional. Keep that professional management and operational control of the fire department. We had to make sure our personnel were trained. We had qualified instructors, and we needed to exceed industry standards. The county fire department will maintain the fire apparatus with our own equipment mechanics. We would recruit, train, hire, manage our personnel. You wouldn't have to worry about that. We'd also take care of labor negotiations, workman comp workman's compensation issues, employee benefits, and career development. When we get to this, we thought we meet all these, we believe we meet all these with the three options that we presented with you. Our option number one was for four fire stations. That's three person engine companies. That's one truck company staffed at all times. One battalion chief. What's not listed there is that these are just the fire park personnel but there was also in there the fire prevention specialist. Those were in the cost. Every single agent, every truck, they're all ALS. Every day of the week, seven days a week. You also get on top of that your daily command staff is that you would have a minimum as a deputy chief, a division chief, and your battalion chief. And I gave you the totals for each one of those if you had any questions. What we get with that? If the city decided to go into cooperative agreement, we'll provide you with fire, or excuse me, eight fire stations within or adjacent to the city. That would be the city fire stations and the regional fire protection resources that surround you right now. That's eight three person ALS engine companies, one four person ALS truck company, one battalion chief. You have your fire safety supervisor who basically does your fire planning. And that does not include the deputy chief or division chief that are available for immediate response on greater alarms. I want to go back to one thing. That's 29 personnel, fire line personnel, right here in the valley to respond to any incident at any time. Option two, that was with four fire stations and one squad. Pretty much what you have now except for they're all paramedic assessment. You still have the same division chief coverage, deputy chief coverage, fire marshal coverage, but they're all ALS. Provide you with eight fire stations within the, within the city or adjacent to. Again, that's eight three-person fire engines. ALS, that's one two-person ALS squad, one battalion chief. You break it down, 27 people in the valley immediately at your response for fire response or medical response. Option three, that was with three fire stations. That's three fire stations with ALS engines, one truck engine, again, with the deputy chief, division chief, and the time chief. You'll have seven fire stations within the valley for adjacent two with three person engine companies. You'll have one ALS truck company, one battalion chief, again, we go with the safety supervisor for a total of 26 personnel at your that's your need right then and there in the valley. Why do we give you those, these three recommendations? We could have given you 15, we could have given you 20. We just tried to provide you with something that we believe that you would like that would meet your needs. We believe that all three options meet the requirements as per the request for fire protection as well as medical emergency services. However, we did, we have said, stated that we believe option three provides the optimal coverage throughout the city and takes maximum advantage of the regionalized fire protection system. But all that is based upon what you requested in your RFP. 
what I have for you here is basically a map. This is basically a four minute drive time. Where, where your location, where your fire engine fire stations are located right now. Four minutes driving in any direction using GIS data based on posted speed limits. Not anything more, not going code three, not going with lights and sirens, but regular driving. This map basically shows you the city, where the fire stations are, they're overlapping. That's what you provide right now, which you can drive to in four minutes. This map right here shows you what we can do on the county outlying stations right now. Everything surrounding, which would be our station 26, 72, 25, and 78. This map is a four minute drive time, including all eight fire stations. What level of coverage can be provided to the valley and to the city? <coughs> this one here is basically with three stations. It shows you what level of coverage can be provided to the city overlapping and four minutes response. I'm going to show you a series of slides, or basically pictures. I don't know if they're as good as Chief Morris, but they're there. They tell you what we do. Actually, I don't have a worker pointer on this. As you see in the upper top corner, that's us providing CPR training in the city of San Jacinto. On the right-hand corner, that's one of our explorer groups doing a muster at a public safety event in the city of San Jacinto. Their fire engine, we treat it just as well as we treat any other fire engine. That's their parade engine. They're pretty proud of it. And the CERT trailer, we started that. We started that with AMR fine money and grants. Not a dime came out of their current operating budget to staff that trailer, to put it in operation. And we're working on a grant to put another one in their city right now. We do fire protection just like you do. As a matter of fact, we help you on fires. The photo on the left is a fire that just happened here just late last year at Menlo and in San Jacinto. Our engine 25 was there. They assisted. We provided assistance and the city said they didn't need it. We said, okay, thank you very much, but we were there to help. The other one is another fire. We do the same fire protection. We have our hazmat team. That's the hazmat rig that you see right there. We're in the process of building another one out in our desert. Those are guys and gals out of work. This could have been a drill right there with the city of Kendall alongside with us. There's photos out there. It's a great cooperation. We do technical rescues. We do over the sides, we do auto extrications. They happen in the city, they happen in the county. We run the traffic accidents, just like everybody else does. Our river and flood rescues, these are in the county itself. Obviously, uh, we're Hemet residents. We're familiar with flooding in the valley. It happens. Everything comes off that mountain and runs right through this city. They've done a great job, by the way, with the drainage. It's gotten better. Vehicle electrification unit. This is what one of our Type 1 fire engines looks like. These are the engines we're building and we're buying. They meet the needs just like yours. Our truck companies, whether it's in Palm Desert, Menifee, Moreno Valley, we have the same trucks. Our brush engines, we have the state brush engines, we have the county brush engines. We also have our medic squads and our ambulances. We have a breathing support that's dedicated 24 hours a day, it's staffed. If we need it above and beyond, having to go back and get, get more equipment from our fire stations, this breathing support will come out. That way we don't have to worry about going back and forth to our fire stations or trailering out another piece of equipment. It is staffed. Our dozers are out there for our assistance. Again, can't say it's our own private helicopter. We can't just go drive or fly around anytime we want, but it's there for emergency, med emergency needs, medicals, hoists. We also have an air attack officer and two air tankers if we have anything that's approaching on the scene. This is our boys and girls in work. They're doing a great job out there. Our training facilities. We have regionalized training facilities. This facility right here is actually open to the city I mean, if they wanted to come out and train with us. It's not a regional training facility. It's over in Riverside. It's a new addition. It's been in service for the last couple of years. It's to provide a realistic uh, training environment. We also have uh, one out in Palm Desert. It's our newest facility. And when the city of Narco came over to a cooperative agreement, this is at their station 47, 
we have access to another training facility over in Norco, so we're trying to really regionalize all of our training facilities so that our guys and gals don't have to leave the area. They actually go in and do in-service training. Conclusion. Thank you. We appreciate the offer of coming out here, letting us talk to you, and present what we believe the fire protection proposal for, and as well as emergency medical. Again, we believe that a cooperative agreement with the city would not only benefit the city of Hemet, the citizens of Hemet, but all the citizens of the San Jacinto Valley. Coming, by becoming part of the Riverside County Fire Department and becoming part of our integrated, cooperative, regionalized fire protection system. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good night. Chief Fulcher, thank you very much. As you can see, we are very proud of our Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department operation. We we strongly believe we could provide excellent fire and EMS for the residents while re always remaining in close contact with the elected and appointed officials. We too would be your hometown fire department. Without question, we would maintain the local contact and local value of importance of working with the citizens. If the city elects to proceed, we would look to discuss, ensure all issues are addressed and solved. Cal Fire Director Ken Pimlock supports our involvement with the city and would be the final approving authority for Cal Fire as he is for just any other cooperative fire protection agreement. Closing, thank you very much. We're honored to be here. Thank you very much to both uh, Chief Morris and uh, Chief Hawkins for the presentations. Uh, thank you for the lights. What we need to do, Council, real quick, uh, we have a resolution that at 10 o'clock the meeting is to be adjourned unless we have a motion to exceed that time frame. So I'll ask at this time for a motion to exceed past. Motion by Council Wright. Second. Second by Council uh, Member Milne. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay. That passes 5 0.